Hi everyone, Diane here. Welcome to my studio. Today we're going to paint some lilacs. And uh, I've spent the morning practicing this and I've got a couple of choices to present to you. Um, and uh, so let's get started. First of all, what I was doing was playing around with the colors that I'm going to use to mix the colors for the uh, lilacs. And I've got two options here. This is um, this is cobalt blue, this is uh, quinacridone rose, or permanent rose. Um, those two colours mix together to make a lilac. And um, the lilac that they make is that one. Now if we want something much stronger, we can go directly into the quinacridone violet. And we might use some of that. Um, but my choice was between cobalt blue and ultramarine and this is the ultramarine and the violet that that makes when you mix it with the rose is um, is that and I think that's obviously because it's um, ultramarine it's more granular so it doesn't make such a smooth mix as the cobalt does and it also to my eye anyway looks a little bit greyer so given the choice of using as my blue cobalt or ultramarine, because I want a fairly clean lilac colour, I'm going to opt for cobalt blue. And this is olive green and I'm going to use that for the leaves. And um, this is orange, Scheveningen orange. And that, together with that, gives me a slightly more burnt green colour so um, that can be added to the leaves as well to give them a bit more life. The basic shape of a lilac flower is it has four petals like that and it has actually essentially here a darker area not necessarily pink more likely to be dark mauve um, and anyway, so the, the petals are oval or roundish and they come together like that to make a simple flower. Now bearing that in mind, I used the technique of a four petaled flower growing in lots and lots of uh, them all growing together on one stem to make a cluster and uh, I painted that and then I simplified it somewhat and I painted that where I did basically just a wash of lilac in the background waited for it to dry a little bit and then dropped in some just some basic dots to uh, indicate the flowers and then I decided to go for the essence of lilac and I stopped drawing all the little petals and I just gave basically an indication of the colour. This one is bluish, that one's mauvish, this one's pinkish. So it's basically pared down to its basics. And I quite liked that. So I thought I might do that again for you. And we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to get rid of my sketchbook. Pop that over there. And I've got a piece here of... Um, watercolour paper. This has got a texture on one side and it's smooth on the other so you could paint on either side. I'm going to go for the um, uh, the textured side and I am going to be using as well as my round brush today I'm going to be using this which is a Pro Art Proline Plus size 6 I think that is. The type is the code number on it is 009 and it's a filbert. That means it's flat and it's got a curved edge, curved end. It doesn't come to a point. And that's going to give a very different shape stroke to my usual round brush, which is also fine. But I might be using both of those, not both at the same time, one in each hand or anything like that. Although that might be interesting, mightn't it? So here are my paints, cobalt blue, uh, quinacridone rose. This one is Scheveningen and purple, quinacridone purple. And I've got burnt umber there in case I want to draw the stems in brown. 
although I might very well use olive green and orange to make brown, so I might not use that at all. Okay, so the basic shape of a lilac flower is somewhat uh, triangular, I suppose you could say. And if we're going to do three, uh, we could start by sketching the one in the middle and I am literally just going to uh, very, very lightly indicate the outline and um, the outline including the stem. And uh, this one comes down a bit further and it's, it's not really, it's just kind of indicated. So that's going to roughly go there and uh, the stem comes around like that. A couple of leaves at the bottom here. Um, and then the, this third one is uh, in front and it goes over like that kind of thing. And if you look at a lilac flower, you'll find that the top, the florets are smaller. They get bigger as it goes down. And uh, the color will vary over the whole thing. But for the purposes of this artistic interpretation, I'm going to center my endeavors on uh, making this one bluish, this one mauvish, and this one pinkish. So we will let's let's go for let's go for it. Cobalt blue. Have to be careful when you're starting to do lilacs in blue because if you're not careful, you'll start thinking that you're painting hydrangeas, which is something completely similar but different. So I'm using my uh, filbert here, and we'll see how that works. And I'm just kind of dancing the brush on the paper, leaving lots of white spaces. And I'm going to make sure I have a very irregular edge down the side there. And the white spaces are going to be varying in size. And um, going to just go down to a certain point letting it bleed, I'm using plenty of water. This is very uh, pale. I haven't used any mud yet. Just using Canacridone Rose and um, Cobalt Blue. And maybe we'll drop a little bit of Cobalt Blue in in a few places. See what happens. Okay, and then the middle one is going to be more mauve, so I'm going to start with the with the violet and add a little bit of blue to that to make that a bit darker. And then starting at the top, same thing, I think make that a little bit darker still. Uh, the, the trick is to keep changing the color so you've got areas which are, well, lots of contrast. And the other thing is not to, uh, not to be too finickety, just to basically let it all hang out. And then some areas you might want to um, run them all together so that you haven't really got so many white spaces. This is most definitely an impressionistic version of um, lilac. Nothing very realistic about this one. And now I've switched to the pink because I'm going to uh, start here. I just need a bit more down here, I think. Switching to the pinkish, pinkish tones a little bit more here. So this one's blue, this one's violet, this one's 
on the pinkish side. And we've got some more blue in there. And if you work fairly quickly, you can um, get lots of bleeds so that, uh, and if you get some cauliflowers, it doesn't matter either. If you get any run backs, back runs, whatever, it's not going to matter. And let's have a bit of more or less pure pink. Of course, I could use a little bit of. Um, uh, what's it called? Potter's pink, which is a little bit more of a hmm, orangey kind of thing. Okay, so we'll see what happens with that. And then I need my round brush to put in the stems, which I'm going to do with uh, olive green and a little bit of um, a little bit of orange I'm going to draw the stems quite thin Lee just a kind of indication maybe we'll make them cross near the bottom okay now bearing in mind this is still drying and we'll probably come in with a second layer and then I'm going to do some leaves so I'm not sure about that positioning, but I'm going to do some very simple leaves. I've got a lilac in the garden, but it's white, so that's not quite a thing. I don't know about white lilac. Seems a bit of a contradiction in terms, really, white lilac. A tiny dab of the orange to um, soften the green to make it more interesting. And then we could indicate the veins in the leaves with the end of a pencil. Like that. Okay, so now I can go back into the flowers and uh, intensify what we've got there. Uh, just in a few, like, I think maybe where this one is behind. It could be a little bit more shadowy there. And then we could have a few more. Uh, dark touches in this one. If you want to, of course, you can do four petal flowers. It takes a very long time though, so a bit long for a video. It takes ages to paint every individual flower. But if you wanted to do that, like that, um, it's a very could be considered to be a very calming and meditative process, I think you probably 
might find. And you can touch a bit of darker blue into the centres of the flowers like that. So there's the final painting. I've just added a little bit of spatter to it and reinforced a few areas. And here's another version and yet another version and a final version just to give you some options as to how much detail you want to go into when you actually paint these lilacs. It's entirely up to you of course and uh, each one has its place depending on what you want to achieve. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint these flowers today and that you learned something. I know I always do whenever I do these videos. And if you did enjoy it, please click uh, subscribe and give me a like if you've got one spare. And come back tomorrow for another painting session. Let's see what I can think of to do tomorrow. I wonder what else is in flower. Thanks again for being with me and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye everyone. Bye.